uh, that there's not the uh, avenue to make the complaint. Uh, it, it just, it just, uh, like I said, I, I don't have no problem with Donald Trump and the White House because I see too many of them every day. I see too many on the local level every day that have the same Donald Trump disposition. That they don't care whether for a small minority of people and everybody else uh, is expendable. That's what's happening here in America right now. And that's why, you know, why the people ain't paying attention and thinking that they're going to get on the good ship Donald Trump one day. Uh, <laughs> the deregulations is occurring. People is looking the other way and not paying attention to the real issues that is confronting us. You know, our children are in some of these schools that they know is full of mold and toxic. And the remedy for it has just been to not build a better quality school for the existing uh, population, but to force the population out. And when the, that population is out, then people are willing to spend the resources to build these new urban core. And you see that in this city. You see this in this city, and let me tell you something, it is stinking, it's rotten. When people are talking about the new West River, they're talking about the, the direct removal of black life. All right, yes. Um, the woman who's speaking, she's just brilliant. I think we all need to take a listen to her. You know, um, she's absolutely right. Flint, Michigan happened under Obama's watch mm -hmm. and the EPA. And I'm all for the EPA and clean water, and I'm against deregulation. But when you bring up Flint, Michigan, the people that are trying to take down the EPA right now, that's what they say. You know, they say a flint happened when you had an EPA. So, <clears throat> you know, she's right. You know, we got to solve these problems on the local level. But listen, I got a question for you all. What if Trump goes after the executive order for environmental justice and repeals it? That seems like that would deal a huge blow to the social justice efforts you're discussing. Okay, say that again. What if he uses the executive order to do what? So there's an executive order for environmental justice that requires um, you can't have disproportionate effects to minority and low-income population. And that's what gives a lot of standing uh, in legal cases for social justice. Yeah, and executive he order. Very well, he could very well repeal that executive order. It's in his power. He could do it with the stroke of a pen tomorrow. Are you so I wonder to, if you guys have thought about any of that. Are you referring to Executive Order 12898? That's uh, exactly what I'm okay. referring to. Relating to the U.S. EPA? It was the first no, major, it, uh, it relates to all federal agencies. And, and I think it relates to all federal funding of any local projects as well. Okay. We have to look further into that. It might be something to follow up on. Yeah. You can, okay, well, thank you. Executive orders are a little bit hard to use, utilize, because they can be overturned by the next president, so they, they carry weight only during that administration, right? But we, I think that's something to follow up on. Let's see what uh, Malcolm has to say. No, this is Brother Life, Malcolm. Brother Life, go ahead. What's going on, baby? I uh, I just really want to appreciate uh, the discussion and um, uh, very elated to hear the uh, invigorating voice of uh, our moving forward in the form of uh, Connie Burton. So glad that that's happening. I, I really uh, don't have a comment. I want to sit in on the show. And Connie, uh, I hope I'm not uh, uh, you know exposing. <laughs> But uh, it kind of, you know, asked me if I could come to the station and perhaps say some things. And I can't make it there, uh, but I would like to sit in on the phone if y'all have the space, man, you know, um, to lend to what's going on as the conversation continues. Fine by me. That's cool with y'all. Yeah. yeah, we'll hold you right on. Just keep going. let see if I can get this telephone system to work right for us today. Okay, cool, hold, cool. Keep holding on for us. You know, I want to go back to, you know, what the first caller said. Say, if Donald Trump, by executive order, says that 
if I understood them right, that that's no longer a rule, right? That deregulation and all of that stuff is in place right now that I think they say that climate science is a joke. They don't believe it, right? All right. So what we see happening, in my view, is that people around the world is struggling to maintain not only, um, I'm talking about ordinary people. Ordinary people have made a determination that if their government won't, they will. And so people is organizing their own interests. And so if we saw that occur here in this country, it would clearly define what side of the line you're on. Clearly. Because while people on Bayshore want to be protected, so do people in East Tampa want to be protected. And we can't have all of our resources just being trickled down to the most prominent, uh, well, high society, whatever they want to call themselves down there, and we just catch all the hell. So if that occur, occur here in America, I think what it would spell for the majority of the people is W-A-R. We would have to do something to make sure that our survival stay intact and we can't sit around. I mean, I wouldn't be willing to sit around and let all the king's men run off with all of the resources and I just say, woe is me. Nah, I would want to overturn something. I would want to tell.